Take a break from your busy schedule and join Bonnie Sala, our guest host for Guidelines for Living. Are you ever surprised by people? Ever ask yourself what makes one person sensitive and caring and another harsh and insensitive when both have grown up in the same environment? If you've ever read Viktor Frankl, the psychiatrist who was sent to a concentration camp in Germany, you'll marvel at the fact that the same situation turns some people into bloodthirsty, selfish animals and others into caring, compassionate individuals who are almost saintly. What can turn a selfish, uncaring human being into a compassionate, sensitive person who can empathize with others? There's one thing for certain. An encounter with a loving, caring individual can change a person's life. Such were the experiences of those who encountered Jesus Christ when he was here on earth. Notice how the lives of people were changed when Jesus touched their lives. Consider some of these. Mary Magdalene, a woman who seemed intent on self-destruction, driven by demons. Zacchaeus, who became willing to return fourfold what he had extorted from people. Or Matthew, who was willing to walk away from a lucrative position to follow the master. All of these were people who stopped making self their primary focus of existence and actually learned to care deeply about others. Their encounter with Jesus Christ changed the focus of their lives from solely pleasure-seeking to care and compassion for others. In simple terms, compassion and care are highly contagious, but they can only be caught by direct contact with someone who has them. No individual in all of history has transformed the lives of so many people and given them the ability to care, as has Jesus Christ. But I know somebody who says he is a Christian, and he's not a very caring person, you may say. And I grant you, based on the hundreds of messages we've received over the years, a lot of you are living with people whose encounter with Jesus hasn't much changed their ability to care for others. On a compassion meter, their actions wouldn't even register. How can we explain that? Let's consider two things. One, first, as C.S. Lewis said, the real test is not necessarily what a person is now what they would have been had they not encountered faith in Christ. And two, remember that God impacts our lives only to the degree that we allow him to penetrate our hearts. One of the words translated compassion in the New Testament is a word that refers to our inner being or viscera. Caring comes from a changed heart. And when your innermost being is still seething in anger and hatred, the ability to care is stifled or non-existent. In closing, may I ask you a tough question? How much do you care about your spouse, your family, your parents, your colleagues at work, your classmates, and your friends? As long as self reigns king, you'll never touch the lives of anyone with compassion because selfishness must give way to concern and concern to care and care to compassion. It's a cycle that begins when you wake up and realize that there are others who count besides yourself. Just before he faced the cross, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment. Love one another even as I have loved you. It takes time. It will cost you. But living out a life of care for others is what attracts them to Christ. You've just heard Bonnie Sala with Guidelines for Living. If you'd like to listen to the program again or download a copy or subscribe to our devotional or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines. Guidelines.